time I will call the U.S. County Board of Supervisors meeting for June the 28th, 2013 to order. I would like for everyone to please stand while the Reverend Jason will meet at the Little Creek Baptist Church to deliver their invitation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, gentlemen, for this privilege. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today grateful to be a citizen of this great nation privileged to be a part of this wonderful commonwealth and to live in these beautiful foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Lord, we come to you today in honor of your word in 1 Timothy where you commanded us to pray for our leaders that they might make decisions that would enable us to live quiet and peaceable lives. God, according to the book of James, you asked us that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. And for today, Lord, we come to you and ask that you would give a measure of that wisdom to this governing body, that they might make physically sound decisions balanced by deeply moral choices, that they might rightly govern our community. God, I pray, Lord, furthermore, that you would grant to this community a hedge of protection and your hand of blessing to be up on it once again. For all these things, Lord, we are grateful and we thank you. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. Allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is seven siblings, voters, taxpayers, senior citizens. Cumulative age of these seven people is over 450 years. And you remember the article in the newspaper concerning their home. Speedwell has lost population since the last sentence, uh, sentence, census. Excuse me. We're a very rural area. We have limited resources, and there is no expansion in, on the, of Speedwell on the immediate on our horizon. We're asking you, the Board of Supervisors, taxpayer elected, to assist us to intercede and tell VDOT that this destruction of the home of these individuals is unacceptable. We're not asking that the St. Peter's Road project be abolished. We're asking them to again reconfigure if they went 100 feet down the road this home of seven siblings, our senior citizens, could remain where it is. We expect you to work on this on our behalf. The public hearing that they had in Speedwell was a dog and pony show from VDOT. They obviously had all this in the works, and it didn't seem that they cared about the objections. We want you today to tell us that you will intercede on the behalf of this family and help them to retain their home. We don't expect no for an answer. VDOT works for us, and we cannot be allowed, well, we can't allow the state to mow over us and do something that is almost unconscionable to take the home of these people. What can, you, what can you tell me? What can you do? Please consider it immediately. They're talking about September, which is only a few months away, and this is just totally unacceptable. These, these people are country folks. They don't have the resources to fight this on their own, and we're expecting you to come to their assistance. Any ideas? I've already voiced my opinion to VDOT about it, but I mean, well, we that more. doesn't mean more. that they're going to do anything. There's never a no. It should be we the people, especially in a situation like this. Mr. Chairman, I would, uh, I, I would suggest that if we can uh, get in touch with, uh, with VDOT, one, to uh, yeah, to ask them to consider it, uh, and, and two, to give us 
why they can't attack. I mean, honestly, if you go there, they, they redid the bridge a couple years ago. It's narrowed the road. If they moved, the whole back house is right on the other side of the bridge. If they went 100 feet down, these people can stay in their home with no problem. All they have to do is put up a sign, road narrows, and it narrows because of the bridge. And so. I, I didn't get that issue. Can I borrow your paper there? And I'll, yes, I'll, you can. Just, I'll return it to you today. Okay. I'll, during a break or something, I'll read that off for you quickly. Thank you. Okay. This is really important, <coughs> and uh, we need to expedite this as quickly as possible. And we need to, if necessary, get our state officials, our delegates, and so on involved because it could be your home or anybody's home. And in this situation, it's not a necessity. If I make this point, the state legislators do feel carried over A to B, so it needs to be part of this meeting. Uh, quite frankly, I've already sent an email concerning this What's a what's the best way to get that? Is that email? I mean, telephone. I think if you send a letter, it's just going to end up in the trash or on a desk somewhere. What what would be our best, most effective way to to reach someone in VDOT? What's your opinion, Mr. Dalton? It doesn't mean we have to lay down and take this. And I ask you to ask <coughs> the leader, if you're going to send them a letter to put a stop on it immediately until we have further review of the project. Can we have that happen? I don't think we can stop them, but we can see that we, we can. can. Well, if they know that we're going perhaps a little bit above them and doing the next best thing, with involving our delegates or anybody else in the state that we can do, um, that I would perceive, if they're smart, would be a stop. Okay? Mr. You Chairman. You're going to work on this and you're going to get back to us within, let's say, a 10 day period and give us a date. And if, and if we don't tell them we need it done within a period of time, they're going <clears> to <throat> let it go and let it go and let it go. So we're, we have to tell them that we need an immediate response and set up dates for uh, public hearings here or in Speedwell or someplace else and then get Carago and Stark and anybody else that we can muster down here. Because they've got all this technology, there's, there doesn't seem to be a reason why they can't. If they're reconfiguring, let them reconfigure some more <coughs> and save these people the stress and so on. Okay, gang? Thank you so much. We'll be looking forward to your response. Mr. Chairman, your information, any of these field characters talk about the necessity of your technology or not today already? Okay, thanks, Sam. These things are already working that way. Anybody else like to speak to citizens' time, please get an opportunity to sign in. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Randy Brewer. All right, Mr. Brewer. <coughs> been before this board a number of times through the years, my husband and I, over the same issue, <coughs> housing issue, and it hasn't been resolved yet. <coughs> we have spoke with them in Richmond, different offices, and they have sent us letters back. And on one individual, top person in Richmond, uh, they told us your Commonwealth attorney 
and your Board of Supervisors and your County Administrator are the ones that should be getting this resolved. And I will say this, your building inspector <clears throat> has destroyed our life. He passed it and we're still fighting it. And one more thing I will say, delegate, when he was the delegate, Bill Carrico, he introduced the claims bill in Richmond to get this settled. Well, it was killed because the committee stated it was not a state issue, that it was a local issue. <clears throat> and sometime after that, uh, y'all feel free, I gotta say this, you contact Bill Carrico. After that, your county administrator contacted Bill Carrico um, and raked him over the coals because he was doing his job trying to get something done about this. Now my question is, what priority does the county administrator have trying to stop what the state delegate at that time was trying to do? He was trying to get this matter resolved. And if you all don't want to get it resolved, we will take it higher. We will take it to the Department of Justice. It, this has happened here in this county <clears throat> and you all are just sitting on it and you're doing nothing. And I think it's time that it come to an end because we will not stop fighting it. Because when it comes to your home, that's a lifetime investment. You don't go out there every day and have a home, but I found out here in this county, you better be prepared to do so. That's all I have to say. I will close citizen sign it. Uh, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't see you coming forward, please. <coughs> Apologize, I didn't see you. I apologize for the mic. I dropped it off the Mary. Okay. But my name's Wilma Chesters, and I just wanted to support what Linda was discussing about the Hoback family. And, you know, you can say you're going to do something, but you can just let it sit and not do it. But, you know, I do look at it. You the board and channel uh, did a letter or so to the state to get liquor by the drink after the citizens of this county had voted it down. And I do believe you need to get the ball going and help this family out. Thank you. No, I look a little better this time. <laughs> Any other citizens like to speak? Okay, I will close this. <coughs> the next order of business is a public hearing our school construction general obligation bonds. If you'll bear with me just a second, please. Notice is hereby given that on the June 28, 2013, the Board of Supervisors of West County, Virginia, will conduct a public hearing which, will, which may be con uh, continued or adjourned as required under applicable law in accordance with section 15.2-2606 of the Code of Virginia of 1950 as amended with respect to the adoption of the Board of Resolutions or resolutions as uh, may be necessary to uh, concern, excuse me, regarding the proposed financing, convenient, uh, proposed financing of certain interstructural improvements purpose of the financing of the uh, renovation, rehabilitation, expansion, construction, and equipment of the Rural Tree Middle School, Sheffield Elementary School, Fort Chisholm Middle School, Spiller Elementary School, and Spiegel Elementary School, including but not limited to additional classrooms and gymnasiums, heating and air conditioning, <coughs> plumbing facilities, windows, doors, ceilings, and lighting upgrades, security systems, furnishings, bleachers, walkways, and public parking, and ADA requirements necessary for the facilities together as related engineering, administrative, and financial costs, collectively the project. The county plans to uh, fund the project through the general obligation bond notes to be issued in a public 
excuse me, in a principal amount not to exceed eight million twenty-five thousand dollars. The public hearing, which may be continued or adjourned, will be conducted at 9.05 or soon thereafter as a matter to be heard by the County Board of Supervisors and the County Administration Building on the South 6th Street, which will be interested citizens may appear at the time and place and present their views, whether orally or in uh, writing, uh, or submit uh, writing to, uh, written comments prior to <coughs> the county may uh, set a time limit on speakers for the rules of the public hearing. Any person with disabilities are urged to contact the county administrator uh, prior to the public hearing to arrange any necessary accommodation. Uh, for additional information, please contact the county administrator. At this time, I will open the public hearing if anyone would like to speak to the public hearing. I have a question. How long will it take us to pay back this 8.025 million? How long will we find that? Anyone else? Yes, yes. <clears throat> construction starting or not, but I noticed they had a, a trash bin in front of the building, and there look like maybe shelves or something in it. Or is the county ensuring that anything possible can like be taken to a surplus place and resold? You know, even th I know there a few years ago when they were doing the high school project, we saw desks and stuff thrown in the trash receptacles there. And you know, even though you might be able to sell that desk for two to five dollars or so, it's wasteless to have to bury it in a landfill at the expense of that when you could get a little bit of money back on it. I'd like to ask you to take that to the school board because that is their property now. Okay, but you oversee it. Can you not check into that too? I don't even know that they have a trade. They haven't asked for any building permits yet. Uh, what has happened is indeed there is a trash container in front of probably the middle school down there. The middle school office has been moved to the high school offices. So what you're probably seeing is the demolition of the inside of the middle school office. And so we will be more than happy to speak to the superintendent. Okay, you know, pertaining, you know, even if you might only say a thousand dollars. I didn't ride, you know, I just saw it from the road. I didn't go look in it. But, you know, I would like to see if there's anything, you know, that can be salvaged that it is. I have in the past had, uh, historically I've had options with the uh, school board, the board supervisors both, uh, by combining some 
resources that we have uh, that need to be surplus. But I do know for a fact that two years ago when the high school was being done, my son, one of his classes he was in, they went and took some stuff and they were calling attention, you know, clean out the old bag building and they did just trash a lot of stuff. I do know that. He even brought home a little um, surge protector that was going to be trash. So, you know, little things like that. Mr. Chairman, I will move that we do that and adopt the, uh, uh, the loan resolution. I'll second the motion. <coughs> Any discussion? <coughs> okay, we will have a roll call vote, Mr. Horney. Aye. 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 And aye. Thank you. Motion passes 7 0. We will move now to the minutes <coughs> of the previous meeting, which was on June 11, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes as aye. presented. A second? I'll second that. Moved and second. Now, are there any additions and corrections to the motion of the minutes of June 11, 2013? I see none. I'll call for the vote. Mr. Hall. Aye. 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 And aye. Thank you very much. Motion is 7-0. We will now move to payment of the invoices. Yes, sir. Roberts and I uh, talked about that earlier today, didn't we? Go ahead. I'll second. So move and second, and we pay the invoice. Is there any invoice any board member would like to discuss before we have a call for a vote? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Mr. Horney. Aye. 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 And aye. Thank you. Unfinished business. Mr. Dalton, would you like to make a recommendation concerning uh, the tax rate for the following year? Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adopt the <coughs> recommendation. I'll second the motion. All right. We have uh, a motion and a second to adopt the proposed uh, rates for 2013. Does anyone have any discussion concerning the rates? The, the only thing that I will, will say, I you know, certainly see the need for yeah, for, for a tax increase. I will just say I'll express my, <laughs> my opinion again that we shouldn't do it all on, uh, on one tax, which is, is what we've done. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to follow suit with the same thing. Uh, 
Ninguna. Aye. Aye. In keeping my objection, I'll, I will vote no. Aye. No. No. Chair votes aye. Budget uh, passes five to two. Thank you. <coughs> Four, Four to three. three. Excuse me. <laughs> Ms. Horney, I apologize. <laughs> Just tell me I don't count. Next, we'll move to reports. Uh, the fiscal year carryover. Mr. Dalton, I believe you uh, reporting for that also. We have before you uh, a memorandum for the FY13 period and the carryover report. The carryover is what's presented to the Budget Committee on June 26th. Uh, I ask that they take no action concerning that. Appropriate the overspending for the Department of Business and Other Reports. There were six departments that had some minor expenditures. The one that's not minor is the U.S. Regional Water Authority that reacted with it. But the fiscal agent, they paid that bill, it passed through the money. That total amount of appropriations for those departments is $107,000. spent money total for FY13 for all the departments and we think we need to congratulate all the departments that turned money back in is sixteen million seven hundred fifty <coughs> Water management, which was a branch of the state of Virginia, totaling twelve million three hundred one zero seven seven as carryovers into the next fiscal year, which leaves four million four hundred fifty seven thousand one thirty three one hundred thirty three dollars that will be returned to the general fund unspent for this fiscal year's budget, which is the, almost the amount that last year we used for surplus to balance the budget. We promised the staff and departments last year. Can I have a motion to accept your report? I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> I'd just like to make a comment again and thank everyone and the different uh, <coughs> agencies to return as much money as they did and be very frugal with the uh, money and we can put that money back to surplus and keep our county tax rates as low as they are. <coughs> uh, any other discussion? The adoption of the revenue for the 2014 expenditure budget, we need to adopt the budget. Is there a motion to adopt the budget? So move. Is there a second? Second. Motion to adopt the revenue and expenditure budget for fiscal year 2014. Any discussion? Seeing none, call for the vote, Mr. Hall. Aye. 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 And aye. Passes 7 0. Mr. Dalton, any other motions for business? There is. Uh, When will we do a first quarter appropriation next uh, meeting? Right. Or the this? cost of the construction projects uh, last year we started appropriating the whole the whole amount of the first year. Okay, so this tells them they can't spend it until we give them permission to spend it. All right, 
that. I need a motion to that effect. Mr. Chairman, I will uh, uh, we'll move that we approve the uh, the FY14 appropriations as they're presented. Okay. <clears throat> Second. 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 Discussion. This, right. this means, I mean, they don't have to come to us with every little detail. I mean, we just, once we appropriate it. Well, remember, you approve the, the bills every month. Right. So they do come to us, sort of, but I mean. Don't approve that expenditure. Okay. Even though you've appropriated money on a monthly basis, you would approve all the expenditures. Okay. So that, that's recently very important for you to look at each and every bill. Anybody else? I see that we are ready for the vote this morning. Aye. Uh, 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 and I. Uh, <coughs> motion passes 7-0. Ms. Dalton, does that conclude? Yes. Okay, we'll move the reports, and the first one is Mr. Crockett. Sam? Morning, Morning. Sam. Morning. Morning. On our year-end report on consolidated account report, we got uh, $47,750,000 in the, in the Consolidated account. Our general fund went into the year with $24,241,000 in the general fund account. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. The uh, school salaries payable has been transferred, it would be transferred into the general fund. We're going to cut that out for next year, too. We've done that for years. It started back when Shirley was here, and it um, just because we didn't have the money, then it was to ensure the salaries for the teachers for July and August. But now it's given Bruce and Mary a fit, so we're just going to cut it out because we got plenty of money and we, we, we will have money enough to fund our, our school salaries for the summer months. So it is just it's one little thing that repass won't have to take care of every month. But we, we, what we're doing is just taking whatever money Sarah tells us how much and we're just putting it back and that's how we build that up. We do that every month, but we really don't, right now we got plenty of money, don't really need to worry about that. Make life a little easier for Bruce and Sid. <laughs> <laughs> On our uh, collections of our local taxes, we collected about $18,031,000 and uh, we're about 1.7% of our collections. We still have some delinquencies, of course, uh, which we'll, we'll always have. But uh, overall, our, our collection rate's fairly good this year. We, we still have uh, a little outstanding personal property and the real estate. We have some outstanding taxes. Today's the deadline to, to get your payment taxes paid before their name goes in the paper and, and the girls are sitting on the telephone and they're doing credit cards this morning. So that's another good use for credit cards. <laughs> So overall, I think we're ending the year in pretty good physical shape, financial shape. So, you know, hope next year does as good. Anybody got any questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Do you have any? <coughs> okay. Uh, we'll now move to uh, supervisors' reports, starting with the Black Lick District. Uh, I have a couple of things. I I know that earlier, and I had kind of forgotten this too. Uh, I'd ask that the noise ordinance be, be put on the agenda for this meeting, but I'd forgotten that it was going to be the, the year-end meeting, so I would request that you know, our discussion uh, about noise ordinance be put uh, on the day meeting in July. I think it's July 23rd. Um, also, uh, yeah, I got a couple of road complaints, uh, and I can, I can email about this. Uh, uh, Mr. Jack Dutton called about Dutton Road, just the rough conditions. Um, and, you know, I can certainly email about that. But I got another <clears throat> phone call from a person that did, you know, concern me some. Uh, it was from a lady named uh, Donna Anderson. Uh, she and her husband, uh, Chet and Donna Anderson, live on Glade Road. Uh, and I don't know if you all are familiar with Glade Road, but where Glade Road comes in and then hog back, there's a section that's, I don't know, anywhere from a quarter to a half a mile that's not paved. Uh, they uh, uh, they were both from Whitfield, but they've been living in California and moved back here, and uh, they bought a place right there. Uh, and uh, she <coughs> called VDOT to ask them about 
you know, uh, about paving the road. She even gave me the number that she called, 228-2153, and she said that she talked to a man named Paul, whom I don't know. Uh, but he told her, according to her, he told her that she needed to call the Board of Supervisors. So she called here, uh, and they asked her where she lived, and they talked, and so then they gave her my number, which was appropriate. Uh, but it's enough of a problem for us to try to convince, I mean, to try to explain to citizens that we don't do roads. And when VDOT has somebody who is working for them that says, well, you need to call the Board of Supervisors, that just compounds the, uh, uh, the problem. And, and the, what I wanted to, to ask is what's the appropriate action? I mean, I can certainly call, uh, you know, this number and, and see if I can talk to this, this Paul. Is it appropriate for me to do that? Does it need to come from, uh, you know, from this office? That would be, uh, uh, yeah, that would be fine. I mean, I'll, I'll be glad to, uh, you know, to express the concern because if, uh, if he's saying that you need to call the Board of Supervisors and if the Board of Supervisors says do it, they'll do it, <laughs> I'm all for suggesting that. Uh, but I know that that's not going to work. I mean, I, I, I guess what my concern is is that when someone calls VDOT, that it's very easy for them to tell the citizen that they have to call the Board of Supervisors uh, and all that does is get the, uh, the citizen off the back of VDOT. Uh, and then we have to go through. Matter of fact, I explained to her how it worked, and she told me that if they had explained that to her at VDOT, that she, you know, she would have understood. All they said was, you'll need to call Board of Supervisors. So uh, can, we, we, can we officially react to that some way? We will. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> Also, uh, Wednesday night, uh, we had uh, the meeting with, uh, with the Director of Emergency Services and the 911 coordinator and all the fire chiefs and the rescue captains. Uh, and they were uh, uh, told that, uh, uh, you know, that they would be an advisory group, the, uh, the, the chiefs and the captains, uh, to meet on a, on a regular basis with the Director of Emergency Services and E911. Uh, and the uh, purpose of the advisory group was to meet, discuss things that were going right, things that were going wrong, and any changes that needed to be made. Already, just from that meeting, there were a couple of glitches that uh, uh, that we came up with that uh, that will be that will be changed to make things uh, work a little better. And, and you know, with the new 911 system, certainly there's going to be a, a few glitches, but um, yeah, they're going to work on it to uh, uh, to fix that. Now, uh, I, I actually thought the meeting went pretty well uh, because people, people did speak up. They brought up some, uh, uh, you know, some areas of concern that were concerns, and we did, uh, uh, we did address those. Uh, uh, but this is one thing that I'd like to ask. I know that we have a fire and rescue committee, and uh, uh, when we were task force, we uh, were going to schedule meetings with, uh, uh, with the fire chiefs and the rescue captains. But if... Uh, this advisory group, which is made up of the same group of people, meet with the E91 coordinator and uh, the director of emergency services. I wonder if it would just be reasonable for uh, uh, for the fire and rescue committee to piggyback on those meetings, you know, to attend those meetings. To uh, uh, then it would give them an opportunity if there's anything that they need to address with the uh, with the board of supervisors. I'm on the committee. It's fine. It's it's fine. Well, the the reason I'm asking is that that would that would make fire chiefs and rescue captains not to have to come out a, a you know a second time just to meet with us, Mr. Hill. Would that work? Well, in that way, we'll have a a, a regular meeting schedule. So if, uh, if yeah, if if that's okay, then uh, then that's then that's what we'll do. And if uh, uh, if Mr. Copeland or, or Mr. Davidson can let the uh, the fire chiefs and the uh, rescue captains know that that's what we're going to do with the fire and rescue <coughs> association. Well, what, what? Maybe you need to straighten me out a little bit. You're a pretty good car salesman. Uh, okay. Are you, I've got are one. you saying that you want to eliminate the committee meeting and hold them jointly? 
Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about uh, uh, eliminating the committee Our meeting committee like meeting. we meet. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm talking about that when the rescue captains and the fire chiefs are down here anyway, then the three of us... Sit there and listen. Yes, and uh, uh, and if there's anything that they need to uh, to address with the uh, with the board of supervisors, or if there's anything that we need to address with them, we can do it that way, and not uh, no our uh, our monthly meeting as we set them up the other day will uh, okay. will yeah you know, we'll keep going if Thank that's you okay. For clarification. Okay, and I, I I have just one other thing, and then I'll. <laughs> Miss Brewer came earlier, uh, and I, I do want to react to that because when I first came on the board, she called me and uh, you know, told me what, you know, what had gone on and that sort of thing. I went to the courthouse and uh, uh, talked with the clerk of the court, uh, and Mr. Horney got me all the, uh, uh, all the legal papers that went with the, uh, with the court case. And, and, and Miss Brewer and her husband won the case. They, they won the case, and so uh, uh, once they won the case, there's not anything for the Board of Supervisors to do anyway. I mean, we certainly can't, uh, uh, you know, we're not the judicial branch. They but anyway, the yes, they did, and I just wanted to, you know, to let you all know that I, you know, I did, you know, go and look at the, uh, at the court case, and they won the case. And I also... Uh, looked into it and uh, and confirmed what Gary said. They won the case, they settled, and there's really nothing else that we can do about it. I mean, it's it's already been through the court system. Actually, a few years ago, the Board of Supervisors, they filed a claim to the board. The board had held a hearing, and they submitted all their evidence, and the board denied the claim. But they did take it to court, and they did one. They did settle. That's uh, th th yeah, that's right. I mean, they won. They settled. They got the uh, uh, they got the settlement. So anyway, I that was just a little aside. I and I'm through now, Mr. All McDaniel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really going to be brief. I have one complaint. I believe I've taken up with Mr. Dalton. Uh, Mr. Bill Foltz uh, lives on Route 702. Uh, we know it as Fox Mount Road, and he's request a, a study to see if we can get a reduced speed up there. And I'd like to ask the sheriff if he can get a deputy freed up to do a little bit of radar work up there. Uh, any any time, even during the day, his complaint is that that's residential, rural residential, kids playing in the road. I, I don't know what happens to that responsibility, but that's his complaint. And those curves there, uh, I can't believe anybody can negotiate that road at 55. I can't. Uh, but a presence up there would help and. Mr. Dalton's going to look into a speed study. Uh, I don't know whether it's restricted or not. Uh, the speed study needs the speed I have to act on the action of the board requesting the speed study. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that we request a speed study for 702 for a safety complaint from a citizen. I second the motion. We have a motion for a speed study to be done. Fox Mountain Road, 
Scott, you <coughs> tell the board exactly now when we do a sheet study, we have to pay for it out of road construction or out of There's a safety section and a secondary road <coughs> Ready to vote? I have a question. Yes, sir. <laughs> does it does it have to come from the board to do a speed study? That's what I was told. Well, I mean, the reason I'm asking is because I had some complaints here a while back, and I emailed Jeff Russell about it, and he emailed me back wanting to know if we want I wanted to do a speed study on it, and I said if that's what it takes, and the way I understood it was that's what they were doing. So. Did I make an executive decision for all of y'all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be okay if you did. You're the hey, board. Hey, hey, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I may have had that day anyway. All right. I have a motion. I don't see any. All in favor of the joint speed study, please say aye. Aye. Uh. Thank you. Anything else? Two. Okay. Coy, lead mine? Lead mine's a... Uh, I had a couple of complaints over the humps in the road. I, I talked to Mr. Cook and they've been taking care of even soil the whole road while they took care of it. And uh, I also had a call from Fire Chief Diving Hump. He wants to see if the county would build a, a landing thing for the helicopter right behind the firehouse. Should that go to fire and rescue? that or the building the grounds. I think probably uh, building the grounds. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, you sure you we'll take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ms. Dalton, do you have any recommendations for us? Deep in hay. <laughs> if it ain't knee deep in hay, <laughs> they had one the other day and it was waist high. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's just like playing tennis, isn't it? It's, <laughs> the ball's it's back in our court. <laughs> okay. I was trying to give to you us. some relief. you got to give right. me credit for that. Okay. I understand. We will refer that then to the <clears throat> Fire and Rescue Committee. Committee. Right. <clears throat> That's all I have. Steve Wolf. Uh, I've had some road complaints, but I've taken care of them. Uh, the only other. Yeah. The only yeah, the only other thing is uh, Miss Myers brought up the Hobax house and the 619 widening thing. Uh, I agree. I think we need to contact VDOT and try to get them to not tear down the three houses in that area. Uh, but at the same time, I've also had a lot of citizens say that we definitely need to make sure that they do something to the road. Thank so you. they're not, I mean... The citizens are in favor of doing something to the road. They don't particularly like the idea of getting rid of the houses and have to make people move, but they are they are in favor of doing the road. Cam out large. Uh, I've had a, a couple of road complaints. I've addressed them with Mr. Dalton, the one on uh, 52 to Austinville Road, the maintenance, uh, VDOT to check on if VDOT was going to spend any money maintenance money on uh, fixing the, the asphalt in the from 52 in Austinsville. Uh, other than that, uh, I had a complaint this morning uh, about the fencing ordinance, if it had been changed. I told him we haven't done anything with the fencing ordinance and uh, I would check into that and, and get back with him. Um, that's all I have. <coughs> I don't have any complaints this month, so I'm good. But thank you for coming back. Our roads are pretty much in town. At least we don't have to deal with it. That takes care of Main Street.
we now move to the county administrator. Do you have a report, Mr. Alton? Uh, I do not have it. All right, we'll go to budget committee, then under committee reports. Oh. Yeah, that's me, but hang on just a second. I'm sorry, I was <laughs> at the wrong place. Uh, the Budget Committee met on uh, June 26, 2013, uh, and we recommend granting county employees Friday, July the 5th, 2013 off in addition to July 4th, 2013. And that really kind of came uh, a little bit of impetus for that came as the, the, you know, the court system is... Uh, is changing all there so that um, uh, their employees are also going to be off on, uh, on on July the 5th. And it also, the state designated. Designate. State designated. Okay, and historically we have always done those. <coughs> uh, coming from a committee, that wouldn't require a second. Uh, any discussion concerning that? All in favor of adding the 5th to the holiday schedule, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7 0. <coughs> Next we have the Water Committee. Uh, after, I'm not sure, but anyway, the Water Committee met on June, June 26, 2013 and recommends reducing the wastewater hookup fee under the same criteria as water hookup for new projects. The fee will be reduced to $350 for a 90-day period and the standard $1,000 thereafter. The committee also recommends that the county, or the county attorney review the current ordinance and provide the required changes to all the Board of Supervisors to move forward with this recommendation. So I don't, I mean, do we, we don't need to do anything on it until we get anything back from Scott, do we? I think it's the recommendation that the full board uh, consider the vote to get the county attorney subject. Oh, okay. It, it may be that the ordinance doesn't need to be changed at all. Okay. If it does, we're just going to implement it immediately after before that. All right. Well, that's I just have one question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Does this also include uh, low income for the uh, low income to apply for a reduce? Yes. Will the water committee make that up as part of the motion? What we're doing is getting water and wastewater. We're just getting them even. Right. Yeah. right. And also. Water committee agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, water then we'll agree. add that. We'll add that to this recommendation. All right. That it's put it back. Put the in there. Recommendation is that for the water committee uh, is that we will uh, basically arrange the wastewater and water to be the same fee. Is there any discussion concerning this? See none. I will call for a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Horning? Aye. 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 And aye. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else have any committee reports to make before we go to new business? That's Mr. Chairman, I didn't have one there. All right, sir. The sheriff has the prisoners again. And I have given him. I have given the school bound party to Patterson again. If anybody has the road needs cleaned up, uh, yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, the sheriff has worked hard and uh, diligent with us uh, to get the, the trash crew pickup uh, started. Uh, it's going to start this month. And uh, I think that it'll be a tremendous asset to the to the county to to get some of the roads cleaned up and the trash picked up alongside of the roads. And um, also, the regional jail has worked well with us and uh, to supply the inmates. And uh, I look forward to seeing them out there and uh, picking up trash. And Mr. Hale's worked hard and long on this too, so <laughs> uh, I'm glad to see it come about. Well, I believe the sheriff is going to address this issue later on if there's some other things when he's on the agenda. So, thank you all, though. All right. <coughs> Does everybody keep on going or take a break before we go to new business? Everybody seems ready to go. Let's go.
I will go to new business, and the first order of new business is the consent calendar. I'll make a motion we approve the consent calendar as presented. Right. Is there a second? Okay. Does anyone have anything in the consent calendar they'd like to discuss? Seeing none, we will call for the vote. Paul. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Ah. And ah. <coughs> the consent calendar passes 7 0, and we're moved to appointments. We have several appointments that need to be made. Uh, Crossroads Regional Industrial Facility Authority, Mr. Howes' time has run out. I'm sure he's wanting to be reelected. Uh, library Board, did they have sent a name over? I didn't see it in the packet, Mr. Dalton. Are you aware of a name that they may have recommendations for? Mount Rogers District Planning Commission, Mr. Bayer, needs to be reappointed or someone else. Southwest Regional Enterprise. Mr. Smith, is, is Bill Smith's two terms up? So we need a new person now. Do we have any recommendations for that one? Whitfield Community College, we have two openings, and I do believe we have some recommendations for that one. What pages? Let's start at the top if we can in Crossroads Regional <coughs> Industrial Facility Authority, Mr. Hauser. I, I, I mean, I will be glad to continue to serve on that if, uh, if, if it's appropriate. Um, this will be a four-year term to start July 1st. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons is that, yeah, I'm also on the signature card at the bank, and, yeah, it would have, I, so I'll, I'll be glad to do it. <coughs> Well, I'll make that motion that we elect him. I'll second that. We have a motion to accept Mr. Howell's appointment. Industrial Facility Authority. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. The Library Board, we're going to hopefully find a name here in a minute. Mount Mr. Rogers Planning District Commission Transportation, oh. Mr. Fire. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Collins has found the, the Library Board with Mike Langford. Mike Langford? Okay. We'll come back to him after Mr. Bayer. Okay. Mr. Bayer, you don't have much say in this. We just have <laughs> 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 uh, Do I have a motion to nominate Mr. Bayer? I would make that motion. All right. Mr. Bayer, you have a nomination. Second. Any other discussion? Uh, a nomination? Seeing none, I will ask Mike a motion vote for Mr. Uh, Bayer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Now, Mike. Mike Langford. Mike Langford has been recommended by the library board for their vacancy. He's a member of the family library. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make that motion that we appoint him. Right, so Mike Langford has been a motion to appoint. Is there a second? Okay. Hey. Anyone else? And and this is who the library board recommends. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Now we'll move to the Southwest Virginia Enterprise, and Mr. Smith is no longer eligible after he has served two terms. To your knowledge, Mr. Albany, you have not made any recommendations to us. We have two people coming off the community college uh, board. We may have a recommendation from the floor, and we also have a recommendation from the uh, community college. Did we find that? Uh, they had, I believe uh, Mr. Phil Snap was on that. Uh, Mr. John Jones, and they had a, did they have another one? Walt Barton was one. Walt. Barton. Burton. Barton. Mark. Walter Barton. Walter Barton. 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 Dr. Barton. Yeah, Dr. Barton. Dr. Barton. Oh, Barton. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody clarify a name for us. <laughs> Jones. Bill Snap. We got two appointments. Two, and I 
I, if, um, if it's appropriate, I, I would nominate Dr. Albert Armentrout. Albert And I'll uh, recommend appointing Bill Snap. So we have four for two. <coughs> Gentlemen, I don't know how you want to handle this. We can start at the top and vote. If anybody gets four, or we can. Uh, Bottom. <laughs> we need to make a uh, separate motions for each appointment. Okay. Is yeah. So does Jerry's motion take a uh, second? Then you can come back to your motion. Okay. Yeah. So the first name to be considered is Al Armentrout. Mr. Townsend, you want to say anything concerning Mr. Armentrout before we vote? Did we get a second? I thought it did. Boy, did you not second that? Okay. Do we have a second? Can I turn over the chairmanship? I'd like to turn over the chairmanship to Tim for to sit, step down at this time. I'll come back to Artie with pro tem. Yeah, Artie is already appointed pro tem. Oh, so Artie, you're pro tem. You already got your I got a mic on. Uh, I will second Dr. Armentrout's nomination. Okay. We've got a motion on the floor uh, with Mr. Hausman for Dr. Albert Armentrout. We've got a second. From Mr. McDaniel, any uh, discussion on those motions? Okay. Call for, call for the call for the question. We'll call for the vote. Roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Horney. Aye. Mr. McRoberts. No. Mr. Reeves. No. Mr. McDaniel. Aye. Mr. Hausman. Aye. Mr. Hale. No. And uh, chair votes no. So, uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, appoint Phil Snap. Right, Phil Snap's name has been put into a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that uh, appoint Mr. Phil Snap. Any discussion concerning Mr. Snap? Seeing none, I'll call Phil. Uh, 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 and I. Thank you. Snap has been selected. Next, we have Mr. John Jones. So, recommendation nominate Mr. John. Seeing none, I'll move to Dr. Barton. Is there a recommendation for Dr. Barton? I'll, I'll recommend Dr. Barton be appointed to. I'll second, second it. Primary. Are we required to accept that? <laughs> I would uh, I would recommend that we accept this report from the uh, registrar. I second. <clears throat> Other discussion? Yes, further discussion is that they made every effort as an electoral board to reduce this price as low as they could. Uh, had minimum poll workers and they were very lonely all day. <laughs> Uh, but this per boat cost is is just ridiculous. I think the sheriff ought to pay it. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Police activity. Um. 
I do want to say our election uh, board does an outstanding job to try to keep everything at a minimal cost as, as they can. Is that on? Uh, page 179. <coughs> David is not here, but they, uh, uh, the little road right off old school road that used to bring the water line right down the mailbox. The name of the farm that's around it, the acres on it, Wolf Den Farm. Wolf Den Line. I'll make that recommendation. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, sure. Have several issues. I'll let you have the floor. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Mr. Reeves' comments about uh, the road detailing. Uh, I would like to, the board to also acknowledge the work that Mr. Bear has done organizing the uh, actual um, nuts and bolts of the equipment that we're going to be needing and uh, making arrangements for the gassing and fueling of the vehicles and the care of the inmates and the deputies done an excellent job. Um, Mr. Hale, I didn't mean to give you a short answer back there. Um, this time of year, we're swamped. I will put this down on the um, designated patrol sheet for Fox Mountain, but I can't promise you a great deal of coverage. We can just catch it when we can. I really don't, and the personnel I have are just, it's the time of year when everybody gets outside and gets ignorant. <laughs> and it, that takes a lot of time. Um, one issue that I will tell Mr. Dalton and y'all also with the 911 center opening and so many years of Everybody has dialed 223-6000 to the sheriff's office for anything, including emergencies. Um, RCI, the phone company, yesterday when they were putting in the new phone, put in a call attendant. And it's a message when they dial the sheriff's office number like they have done for the past Half century. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Mr. Dalton always tells me the same thing. He says it's on every refrigerator in the county to call 223-6000. There will be a call attendant on it. I've tested it. It works. It directs them that if they need law enforcement, fire, or rescue, to please hang up and dial 911. If they want to speak to a representative of the sheriff's office, stay on the line and their call will be answered. Tested it yesterday, it worked very well. So uh, what was happening was we were getting calls, still getting 911 calls into 6,000, and we were having to pick them up to the 911 center it's hard to account for the actual number of 911 calls that you have. This way, they'll be able to capture the 911 call in the 911 center um, and 
hopefully that will eliminate a lot of the calls, emergency calls actually coming into the sheriff's office and go to the 911 center where they can be immediately dispatched. Uh, on the agenda, uh, you have a Westland Law Enforcement Critical Needs Assessment. This was funded by the Westland uh, Grants Foundation or Foundation, uh, Foundation Grant. Uh, it was performed by a consultant who was DCJS recognized in order to do this type of assessment. Uh, I'm not going to go through every page. The good news on this, and I'll tell you right up front, I'm not asking y'all for a dime. So this should make it a little bit easier to get through. <laughs> it's broken down into a number of sections. One being uh, rapid response to active shooter training. Uh, they have a recommendation that we incorporate dual retreat with the with county and Blaine County into joint training on this. Um, I'm going to do my part on this to begin with, with uh, uh, an agreement with Blaine County, such as we have in uh, mutual aid agreements, such as we have with Smith County and uh, Grayson County, since they were part of this study. Uh, they did cite that there are times when we would actually have a deputy closer to, say, Bland High School or one of the grade schools than a Bland unit would be. So uh, that is one item that they uh, pointed out. Second item that they pointed out is the need for equipment uh, for individual patrol vehicles, which includes uh, uh, basically gear to break into a house with, uh, which are specialized uh, tools. I mean, they're like giant crowbars, except they're really sharp. They're very similar to what the fire department uses. They recommend that each vehicle be equipped with uh, a toolkit to gain access into a re uh, building in case of an emergency, which also could include the school. Uh, you'll see an assessment of the agencies with regard to active shooter training. Uh, they do recommend that each of our vehicles have a uh, patrol rifle, Now we have 15 vehicles where we have personnel that could respond to an active shooter that do not have patrol rifles. Uh, the recommendation of us forming a Westland Regional Law Enforcement Coalition, I've already read the rest. We have a mutual aid agreement already with the town of Brookville, but it's also in my jurisdiction. So, uh, Radio communications, there are several weaknesses uh, that they suggest that we address due to the <coughs> dead spots in Barron Springs, and especially for Churchill. Uh, due to the placement of the antennas on Sand Mountain. Um, there, it's in a blind spot, the shadow of the mountain that they're broadcasting from the Sand Mountain Tower will keep radio communications from going to the patrol car there. We had the same problem at uh, the crossroads at Royal Retreat. Now, from what I understand from uh, Mr. Davidson, uh, they're addressing that by installation of additional radio towers um, and antennas, uh, which should help us out some. Uh, there's 
the recommendation in there for a uh, the school resource officer uh, at present the way the schools are constructed it's extremely hard for them to keep their radios on patrol frequency and for us to be able to communicate with them but we have addressed this uh, with some uh, antenna that would allow them to roll over to another channel and it's a repeater that's been installed in the school so we feel like we have that taken care of right at the moment but they, it is a manual switch that they have to put on in other words they have to turn the dial to use the repeater the regular uh, radio frequency will not kick the repeater off and I guess if you're getting shot at you're not going to sit there and think about which channel you're going to have to uh, so but they, that's a work in progress uh, Blaine County has the same problem uh, and it's just due to our terrain we have so many mountains and the location of the antenna that you just can't reach it St. Cleve has tremendous problems with their star system, which are high frequency, uh, fairly low transmitting power, uh, where they, they can't get out to the, on their star system. They do address the need for tasers to be issued to all personnel. Uh, we have a limited number of tasers. I don't know if any of y'all have ever seen one in use. Apply an effective speed. It actually reduces the injury to both the suspect and to the officer. Uh, they are quite expensive. Now, everyone has attended taser training at the Sheriff's Office. Blaine County has none. this one on that and then we'll go on to the other thing uh, they do make a uh, recommendation since we do not have a secure lot to park a vehicle that's been seized we are parking our vehicle down on Kent Lane behind the recycling center that have been seized but there's no fence around they are recommending that a fence be erected in that area in accordance to and in cooperation with the county uh, to where we can actually lock a, a vehicle up in the yard that has a fence around it to prevent tampering with the uh, vehicle as well as a video feed. But like I said, I'm not asking y'all for any money. I'm not expecting y'all to uh, be responsible for any of this. What I need from you is an acceptance of these recommendations and needs assessment from the Board of Supervisors. So when we go forth with a, uh, making applications for grants that we can identify in the grant application that a needs assessment has been made, the County Board of Supervisors approves of the needs assessment and that uh, uh, once we get this coalition formed, it will be a multi-jurisdictional uh, application on the grant, which generally gets you much better results than uh, applying as a single entity. I have a motion that we accept this a needs assessment. I would make that motion. Second. I'll second. second. <coughs> Any discussion? Can, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Uh, I just curious the, uh, the the radio uh, problem I know that we have some high voltage power lines going through with Kenny are those things shielded enough that, I mean they don't cause any interference any okay unless you're standing right under one and it's humid enough you might get as far yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't interfere with communication no, it yeah uh, the, uh, the, the 
the second thing, of course, since I'm from the Black Oak District, can you just kind of briefly tell me how Roy Creek fits into all this? I mean, I, I saw the, you know, the recommendations and things. I'm assuming that this needs assessment will go to the town council, be presented to uh, to them by by someone from the sheriff's department or. Okay. All right, and so then it will be up to them also to uh, uh, to uh, adopt anything that's a recommendation in here. Because I know I, I, I saw in here that it said that a town the size of Roy Treat usually has three to four officers, and I know the Roy Treat has, has one, and I also know that apparently doesn't have... Uh, yeah, I, he's got a jack in the back of the car. Uh, but um, uh, so rapid response training. Uh, can the chief of police at retreat? I mean, how? I'm just curious. Training, brother. Okay. As well as the council, we will do a joint training. Okay. Okay. Our schools now, uh, and yeah, I, I think about rural retreat. When you put the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school all together, that's several hundred, yeah, hundreds of kids. Uh, so, but so the chief of police, the retreat chief, will uh, present it to. Should okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm sorry. That, that was all. Right. I understand. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Anybody else? All in favor of discussing your report, please say aye. Aye. aye.
doing a good working relationship together. Um, after we pick this up on Saturday, they should bring a truck in on Monday to pick the trash up. Uh, we have another individual who is retired from the regional jail who will be serve as the van driver. And the basic mechanics of it is we will travel, the bus will travel down to where they're going to end, put up a sign, and then go back to where they're going to start, put up a sign, and then begin hitting both sides of the highway. The van driver will stay in the van and keep pace with them. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to find spots to where he can get out of the road, but should something develop with one of the inmates, he would be available to uh, my phone's ringing, so excuse me. He'll be available to assist uh, J.B. Jackson. So uh, I think it'll work well. Uh, I don't know when we'll be able to get more days in, um, but we're going to try. What will happen where you can't expand it to more days? Basically, they will have to come to full staff at New River Jail. See, they keep the trustees in a separate pod. They are uh, segregated from the general population because they're outside in the real world all day long mm -hmm. instead of being behind bars. Mm -hmm. So have an opportunity to get their hands on money, they have an opportunity to get their hands on cigarettes, drugs, that type of thing. So they segregate them from the uh, general population uh, so the, the contraband is not passed to the general population. Um, right now they only have personnel to watch one pod. expand it further to where we could go to a more days per month, uh, they would have to open a, have personnel available to open a second pod for trade. You lost me. Lost the, the mechanics of that makes no sense to me. If you can get them out on Saturday, why can't you get them See, out on Friday? Right. Monday through Friday. But most counties don't take the trustees on Saturday. Still don't get it, Doug. That's the, look That's on the way it is. <laughs> Well, but it's not that we don't have enough trustees, is it? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. So you're saying we'd like to open another pod, more people qualify, then, all right, now I understand. Yeah. Sorry if I lost you there. Uh, it's kind of complex. But they have to, the screening process becomes a trustee to go outside is pretty rigorous. And how trustee is a trustee? He is a convict. Yeah. Sidewalk. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, so should should they get up to strength to where they can open a pod for additional trustees, then we can draw from there. And they're taking applications continuously, and and eventually this uh, shortfall of these people, you know, going to the state prison system in Grayson County, and and we're not only losing them to that, we're losing them to other things too. The, the arsenal is is hired some, they're picked up, and 
and some other things. And uh, but they're working hard at the regional jail to get full staff. When personnel is available. When it's available. Yes. Okay. It's available. Now, let me add this. I spoke with Gerald Dobbins yesterday who runs the mobile trash cleanup crew. We will still have them coming into the county. We're not displacing them, but they will still be coming into the county. And I do need from each one of y'all. I know, I know Stephen has requested, we got an email from Stephen, should we bypass you now and send it to him or? Whichever. <laughs> Whichever send it. We'll send it to you and you can send it to the sheriff. including us, that have inmates that come out on Saturday, <coughs> trusted to work here in the office. We just have a bigger pool on Saturday. Do you have from uh, DDOT or the county where these adopted sections are, where some civic organization has adopted a section? I'd, I'd like to see us not deploy inmates where uh, the Sons of Confederate Veterans or uh, the Fire Department or the Rotan Club uh, is taking care of a section. There's got to be some kind of VDOT uh, agreement that tells you because you, you get so many miles with a civic organization and it would seem wrong to, that we commit these people to those that are being picked up by a civic organization, like the two miles at uh, at uh, Carter Park, that gets picked up three times a year, I think, by a civic organization. The same thing on Max Meadows Road from uh, 80, the Pioneer Ruitan keeps that picked up. And now that they've mowed, they'll, I'm sure they'll be picking them up. So some way we ought to be able to coordinate, not committing this inmate help to the roads that are already being worked on. Let's get some of these bad areas, like the park and ride area over on the frontage road. They, yeah, they could go there every month and be busy. Oh yeah, uh, uh, the uh, regional jail crew hit the park and ride last time they were in the county. Give them two weeks, give them two weeks and it's back to where it was before. Same thing at Exit 77. So much trash flows down off of the truck stop and ends up in, the, and also from the water runoff. Uh, it builds up rather quickly. So. already been brought up in budget, but this is, uh, the town has decided to make semi-annual payments on the sick uh, person.
person that we'll be using in the sheriff's office for retreat. Uh, we had originally talked about an annual invoice. Uh, they prefer a semi-annual invoice, but there's the money, so I can tell Mr. Dalton that I have the money in hand. <laughs> 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 We're glad to see you. <laughs> okay. I understand y'all want to talk about the junk dealer laws that have come out and the uh, how it's going to affect the county. They have, and I have gone over to the Commonwealth's attorney with this. When I was in sheriff's training back in April, they do every year they do a presentation of selected acts. Now they're not in the law yet. presenter gives you a three ring uh, binder about like that and goes through all the selected acts in about an hour hour to 45 minutes and basically all he does is pick the title and his comment on this was this will strengthen the documentation that metal processors buyers will have to provide uh, when they buy non-ferrous metals and materials and objects. What the presenter failed to explain, we found out later that both uh, the chief of police in the locality and the sheriff um, for certain classes of people have to issue junk dealer permits. That was hidden in the fine print and it was never presented to us. Uh, I have assembled a packet which is available at the sheriff's office at the front window for everyone that has a question about this. Uh, there are a number of different um, code sections that they have changed. The basic idea behind this was to be able to document the people that are selling scrap metal and objects such as heat pumps, stoves, washing machines, that type of thing, to junkyards. Okay metal processing sites. They've changed some of the definitions of who is what they're going to call these people in the future. But basically, the junk dealer permit is for an individual that is going around and collecting objects, either buying them or just picking them up where he finds them. Uh, he has to be licensed a permit. Um, code says that we can charge up to $50 for this. They do have to be fingerprinted. They have to make an application to me. They cannot have to be, uh, they cannot be a convicted felon within the past three years or if they're convicted of a crime involving moral <coughs> turpitude during the period of the permit the permit is revoked and they can no longer sell, buy or sell. Um, if you're in a company, chances are you're already licensed. Okay. There are a number of These exceptions to like this. 
people that can pick up logs. Yeah, that's the reason that the, the package is so thick. And we have gone around to each metal processor in the county, giving them a packet of all these revised laws, in addition <coughs> to a Virginia State Police report form that they have to uh, fill out and maintain. It's quite a layer of bureaucracy, to be perfectly frank with you, it's been added here uh, when it comes to the junk dealing. Uh, but the people that are exempted from this are homeowners removing materials from their own property, aluminum can picker-uppers are exempted from this, which is good. They're getting the, the roads cleaned themselves and picking up aluminum cans or picking them up from trash cans in the various spots. Uh, the scrap metal processor is exempted from this. Um, authorized scrap dealers, public utilities, public transportation companies, licensed brokers, uh, industrial and Manufacturing companies, marine, automobile, and aircraft salvage and wrecking companies, or governmental entities. And I was thinking about a question that Mr. Dalton asked me the other day about Mr. Moore. I believe he would be regarded as he's the one that does the recycling for the county. I believe due to his contract with the county that he would be treated as a governmental entity. But if he catches some slack over it, I'll issue him a uh, permit for sure. Uh, this is, there's two parts to this. And it takes a lot of reading. That's why we have developed the packets to give to the public when they have questions. And all the packets have been delivered to all of the metal processors in the county. So far, our uh, response from the metal processors has been overwhelmingly po uh, positive. They like it, you know, because it takes more of the burden off of them uh, should they end up buying some stolen material. Uh, they have a photograph of the vehicle. They'll have a photograph of the item, and they have to present a operator's license in order to sell it. But once again, this is just people that are doing scrap metal as a business. And it covers both the buying the scrap metal or acquisition. If somebody gave it to them and they turn around and sell it to a metal processor, and they run over 600 pounds or 26 deliveries <coughs> in a year's time, uh, they have to have a junk dealer's license. Is the recycling centers, do they take the Photographs, some of them are already running videotape, which satisfies the photographic section because they can capture the images from the video. Um, most, all of them are already requiring driver's licenses, photo IDs. Uh, now, if they have somebody come into the uh, um, center, that is a junk dealer, they can just reference that junk dealer license number. If they have someone come into a center that doesn't have a receipt and they're kind of dubious about whether or not it actually came off their property. Now this does not apply to cars. Cars and truck cars are a completely different uh, set of rules.
but if they have, they have a um, basically a requirement, a requirement to do a diligent examination of the item and a diligent questioning of the person that's selling. And then they have to fill out a form if they don't have a receipt, um, and which is, of course, this is state police form. If you would like, I can have uh, copies of this packet reproduced for each one of you and have them put in your boxes because, like I said, it's, there's quite a bit in here. They changed so many subsections and redefined. Oh, well, they didn't redefine them, but they renamed them. There, well, well that, that's what I mean. If I go down to Riders and I say, they've always taken a picture of your driver's license. They've always gotten a tag number of, of your vehicle. I, I don't know that we really needed this, but evidently Danville did because they couldn't keep up with their manhole covers. But uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, People need to know about it. Ryder won't turn somebody away if he's a farmer and he's or a landowner or a property owner and he goes down there. They're probably going to tell you about it, but you're not going to get turned away because we're going to get this stuff dumped on the side of the road if you can't get rid of it. And you don't have enough deputies to patrol the roads and take care of the trash, so. anything with the new with the TV station it was on six o'clock news last night oh, yeah. that this is a free fee that you go get no, this it's not a free fee. that's what they said on TV well, so they're, uh, they're wrong. but I was surprised <laughs> you I was surprised you only went for fifty dollars because you're a hundred dollar no, man it allows me to charge up to fifty dollars fifty nine point one dash one eighteen gives me the right to charge up to fifty dollars we are going to be charging $20, uh, which I feel is more than reasonable. $50 is really more than reasonable, but we're going to be charging $20 just for the form. So they come in, they come in, and talk to us. And we have to maintain a file. So they've taken a sledgehammer. It's going to take some time to work all these details out. It's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, are we going to show up on July 2nd when somebody's got 800 pounds of uh, 
junk metal and want to sell, and they got these pricing machines and bagging them out of them and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more. But that junk food is not so much more. Uh, it is in every pack of special, and it's going to be selling the same thing for the rest of the day. It's not the junk food. Unless somebody comes into it and says, why I don't okay. fish or don't eat right, right. the rich desert grain, okay, right, right. Uh, it would be out of their business. Okay, but then they come in and put the stuff in the junk and sell it. Yeah. Okay. And we do have people coming in from uh, that deal a lot with riders from out of Carroll County. They should be getting their permit from Carroll County. But we also have people coming in from North Carolina hauling junk. Yeah, oh yeah. <coughs> Trust me. Um, they'll have to get the permit from me. months of what I've been selling in the past, but then you don't want to sell it then, so they don't want to sell it with a lot of competition. Yeah. Homeowners are sure, the 
big thing we need to get out to people is, uh, and we could do that through the county website, if they have a question about whether or not they're required to have one of these, contact the sheriff's office. We have information packets available. Two two three six thousand. That is an administrative cost. <laughs> <laughs> Get it off your refrigerator door. <laughs> but uh, maybe you need some new magnets out. So squeeze the cut the spurs of old ones. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, yeah, it, it is. The way they wrote the law up, if they had left it in that format, it would have been much simpler for everybody because it was a three-page document that explained it from point A to point Z. This, 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 and this, and this. But that was the book. When they went to the statue and had to refine the statue, then all of a sudden they chopped it up into little pieces. And that's what I have in information about it. Uh, but it does not cover household items. Um, it's primarily for non-ferrous metal, which is copper. And it was the uh, General Assembly's ambition to be able to track copper sales more closely. So basically it boils down to being an unfunded mandate to the sheriff's office. With the exception of the $20 for the fingerprinting. <laughs> now, they don't uh, don't need the, to be exact, we can't even uh, apply for the permit until Monday. And uh, we are going to have to run a criminal history on this just to show that they haven't been convicted in the past three years of a felony or a crime involving moral turpitude, which is larceny. Is it's a law, but we're going to kind of give people a grace period for the dust to settle and everybody to get a basic understanding of it. Uh, what they're, you know, West Virginia that did this several years ago. And two of our investigators went over to look for some copper. And uh, they were inquiring to the manager of the copper, metal processing company. Uh, we're trying to track some copper. We need to see your receipts for copper sales. And he, the lady said, sure. And hands him about a two inch thick set of paper. And they said, okay, how about the last day? And he, she looked at him and said, honey, that's today. It was already two inches thick. They felt they bought that much copper during that time. So, We will do with it what we can. Uh, we just don't want everybody to get panicked about it. And I'm sorry the computer is making me do that. If it comes from your property, regardless of what it is, we would exempt from having to have the permit. But you still got to fill out the paperwork. That's still required. That's required of the state of the copper. So uh, the big thing that locally that comes with my responsibility is the junk permit, junk wheel permit. If so, say for example, if somebody comes to you and you've got an old house on your property, and they'll tell you, "Look, I'll tear this house down." smooth it up if you'll give me the fixtures and the pipes out of it. 
that's acquired. Cash may not change hands, but it's acquired. If they take those materials in turn and then go to a metal processor and sell it, yes, they are going to have to have a junk dealer's permit. And there are reporting requirements that they have to make each day. There's no money taking place for people in business. Why wouldn't they have to sue the people dropping that off to get rid of it? Because that's all going to cost them is time. Then they add it back. Uh, fridge and cooker. Refrigerators and stoves need to be issued for people to come by and say, will you get rid of this for me? And then say, I will. There's no money changing. Well, once again, <laughs> you know, there's an affidavit that you can sign on that mm -hmm. because it, it I, I answered your question, it's an aggregate amount. Mm -hmm. Is it 26 transactions or 600 pounds? Now, two refrigerators, if you haul two refrigerators over there at the same time, you pass this hundred pounds over there. But I definitely see it's two washing machines. You pass this mm -hmm. hundred pounds. Uh, but it's 26 uh, transactions during the year or 600 pound aggregate. So it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work. Uh, the onus actually, though, is placed on the metal processor themselves. As well as the junk dealer. One gig. One gig. From date of issuance. One month here in Wick County. How's everything going? That it? We stand adjourned. Thank you.